my soul before the Lord, for God is always near. If all your mind is moved to pray, God listens and will hear. You need not multiply your words, nor pray for practice on beyond all speech God understands the hunger of your heart wait thin in quiet haunted hands your anxious thoughts and friends God knows your need before you ask, and works for what is best. Be still, my soul, before the Lord, on God in patience wait. God's love unseen surrounds your life. God's help will not be late. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Please kneel as you're able. We take a moment of silence to reflect on God's word and for self-examination. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand for the intro. to me and answer me. O oh, you who have been my hell, forsake me not, O oh God of my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have arisen against me 
and they breathe out violence. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Glory be unto the Son, unto the Holy in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. O you who have been my help, Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. God, you have prepared for those who love you good things that surpass all understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and hear the Old Testament lesson. The Old Testament lesson is from 1 Kings chapter 19. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. 
and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. The Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael the king over Assyria, over Syria. And Jehu, son of Nimshi, and you shall anoint him to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Saphath Abel Maloah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the people who escapes from the sword of Hazael shall Jehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I shall leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed, bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. And so he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen in front of him. And he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I shall follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what I have done to you, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the, with the, yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Behold our shield, O God. You look on the face of your anointed. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. The epistle for this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. But to us, who are being saved, it is the power of God. For thus it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach, to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter. Glory be to Hear the word of God. He was standing by the lake, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Get, getting into one of the boats, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep, and let down your nets for a catch. 
And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to the partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both the boats, so they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees. He fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and, and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to thee, o Christ. We confess our faith together using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered in and the third day he rose again from ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the children forward for the children's message. Good morning. Are we tired this morning? Yeah. I'm tired. So today in the Old Testament, we heard that Elisha was called to be God's next prophet. Now, what did, what did Elisha do before he became a prophet? Do you know? Does anybody know what Elisha did before he became a prophet? What was his job? or from what we can gather from the Bible. Yeah, so he was plowing with 12 oxen. Right? Do you know what plowing is? Yeah, they make lines and then they plant the seeds and they use the ox to pull the heavy metal to make the lines, right? Well, when Elijah called Elisha, and said, you're going to be the next prophet. What did Elisha do with his ox, 12 oxen, and the yokes? Yeah, he sacrificed the animals. And they ate them. He probably used the yoke as the fire. And then he followed Elijah. Now, what does this have to do with us? Who do we follow? Jesus. And so what we can learn from this, even from the New Testament, is that we leave everything behind to follow Jesus. 
This is very important. It means that we leave our sins behind. We leave the things of this world behind that are not of God. And we have our eyes fixed on Jesus. You think it's tempting sometimes, the things of this world? Yeah? It is, isn't it? And when you see other kids in the park and they're saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, it might be tempting to say that, right? It might be tempting to use God's name in vain. Or when you see other kids hit in the playground, it might be tempting to do the same, right? Or when you see other kids not sharing, right? But you are baptized into Jesus. You are a disciple of Jesus. You have left the things of the world behind. And instead of saying God's name in vain, you can say, correctly. Let us pray to God. Let us give thanks to God. Let me show you how to love your brothers and sisters by treating them kindly, by showing them how to love one another. So you are children of God. Never forget that. And what has Jesus done for you? Right. Jesus gave everything for us so that we could be pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. We know, Lord, as Christians, many times we will have to sacrifice things to follow. Give us the strength. Thank you for all that Jesus has done for us. Great is in you. Amen. All right. Thank you, everybody.
every cloud to free from sin and its temptation. I am the refuge of the soul and lead you to your heavenly home. Let us fall to Christ our Lord and take the cross appointed and firmly be into his word in some wanted for the the battle strain the crown of heavenly love obtain. I will not die, but live to proclaim what the Lord has done. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. A disciple means one who is learning from their teacher. Now, who is the best teacher of all time? Jesus. You know, a lot of people want to say Socrates, Aristotle. Even though they came before Christ, we still know that Christ is the best teacher because he is God incarnate. Our gospel starts off by saying this. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, this means that the people actually wanted to hear God's word. Now, we actually don't get this too often. Usually people want Jesus because they're hungry or they want miracles. But this is neat because they want to hear the word of God. They want to learn from Christ. Now, the text goes on and it shows you how much of a good teacher Christ is. Because what does Christ get into? He gets into a boat, right? And he tells Simon Peter to push out into the water. Now, what do you know about water? If you're standing on one side of the shore and there's some, somebody that's all the way on the other side of the shore, let's say half a mile away, can you hear them? Yes, we know that water helps sound carry. And so as Jesus gets into the crowds are pressing in on him. I can't move from this position because out. So if this looks a little awkward, it's just so that you can hear me. So the crowds are pressing in on him. Right? If he, if he speaks and he's not elevated like on the he gets into the boat and he amphitheater in the sense that they're all on the shore and he's able to speak to them and his voice is able to travel and more people can hear Simon right I think this might be a little confusing for us because there are boats yet James and John are in the other boat and Simon is in the boat with Peter, with, uh, with Christ. And so Jesus. Fishermen, though, in a sense, you are as Christians, but. that they are fishing at night. They fish all night to catch the fish, but nothing has happened. And so what does Christ tell them to do? Cast the net on the other side. Now, what's interesting about this too is that they, already, they were already washing their nets, which means what? They're done. They, they just finished knocking on doors wanting to tell people about Jesus and got a bunch of doors slammed in their faces. They just finished talking about Christ to a co-worker at their job. And the co-worker had nothing to do with that. They didn't want to listen. 
They just finished talking to one of their family members about the Lord who's an atheist, and they got shut down. Yet Jesus tells them, cast the net again. And they do, and there is an abundance of fish that they have to call James and John to collect the fish. And then what happens to the boats? They begin to sink too. Now, when Simon Peter sees all this, what does he say? Right. Good Lutheran, right? Depart from me. I, poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you that I am not worthy to have you in my boat. But what's interesting about this is he's telling Jesus, get out of my boat. Right? It really should be, I'm going to leave the boat because I need to depart from you. Yet Simon says, no, leave. How does Jesus respond? He doesn't say, yes, you're a poor, miserable sinner. But he says, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. Don't worry, Gary. It's their fresh batteries. It's not the batteries. So Peter acknowledges that he is a sinner. Yet Jesus comes and comforts him and says, fear not. Because I will still use you even though you are a sinner. You see, brothers and sisters in Christ, we are all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. But God still is capable of using us. We should not have our sinful nature be an excuse for not being one who shares the word of God with people. Does this make sense what I'm saying? If that was the case, nobody could share the word of God. It is not us that makes us capable of sharing God's word, but it is Christ. It is Christ who makes one holy. This is the whole purpose of vestments as a pastor. It is not because I am well-groomed and well-dressed that allows me to proclaim Christ's excellency. But the vestments are simply to be here to show you that I am to represent Christ for you. That you don't need to be afraid that he died for you. The same thing as the clerical calling. I am not trying to draw attention to myself, but it is to show that I am simply to bring the God, word of God to you. Therefore, brothers and sisters in Christ, fear not. Christ is with you. You are no longer to be idle to the ways of Jesus, but now you speak the word of Christ. It might get you in some difficult situations, yet fear not, because he is with you. Church was full. Why? More people hearing the word, right? Do you think that Peter, James, and John wished they would have caught fish that night? Yes. But they did catch fish. Jesus is still in control of his church. Fear not. He is the one that has the church in his hands and he continues to sustain the church in times of plenty and in times of famine. The thing that we don't need to do is worry and become anxious, thinking that somehow God's church will not go on. Fear not. Jesus is still in charge. Jesus still gives us this very same nets that he gave to Peter, James, and John to use. These nets are to catch people. It is the gospel that brings people to faith. It's not your cunningness. It's not your presentation of logic. But it is simply 
Christ crucified. Right? Jews demand a sign. How many people today, if you're seeing a sign, God does not believe in you? He has given a sign. Jesus on the cross. How many Gentiles seek after different things? Yet it's Christ crucified, which is the truth, which brings comfort to the soul that we are forgiven. And yes, we do confess like Peter. I am unworthy, God. I am a sinner. But Christ comes and he absolves us. He forgives us. He comforts us. He reminds us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. There is a prayer that Luther wrote. It's called the Sacristy Prayer. And I pray it often to remind me, not only as a Christian, but also as a pastor, what my duties are to serve God's people. And I want to leave you with this prayer. And though you are not a pastor, uh, you are a Christian. And there are many things that correlate in this prayer to your everyday life. So I pray that you can give uh, good attention to this prayer. O Lord God, dear Father in heaven, I am indeed unworthy of the office and ministry in which I am to make known thy glory and to nurture and to serve this congregation. But since thou hast appointed me to be a pastor and teacher, and the people are in need of the teachings and instructions, O be thou my helper, and let thy holy angels attend me. Then if thou art pleased to accomplish anything through me, to thy glory, not to mine, or to the praise of men, grant me, out of thy pure grace and mercy, a right understanding of thy word, that I may also diligently perform it. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, thou shepherd and bishop of our souls, send thy holy angel, that he may work with me, yea, that he may work in me, to will and to do through thy divine strength, according to thy good pleasure. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. At this time,
Lord God of hosts, since your foolishness is wiser than men's wisdom and your weakness stronger than men's strength, give all preachers and hearers delight in the folly of Christ crucified, in which the fullness of divine power and wisdom are hidden. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you gave us life in Christ. Grant that having been strengthened by your gifts, we may all gladly tell others of the hope that we have in you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hosts, give us faith to let down the nets of your word in our daily vocations and trust your son to do his gracious work through poor sinners like us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hosts, bless our president and all those who govern us in your stead. Keep them from the folly of opposing your word in your church and give them wisdom to govern justly in accordance with your will. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hosts, we pray for those who have asked for our prayers and for those who are upon our hearts and our minds. We pray for our, our brother Kalen, Lord, as he was receiving instruction in the Lutheran church and it seems that he's going to go to Rome, we pray, Lord, that he would continue to focus on the gospel and see, in its, see it in its purity and in its truth. We also pray for Manuel, who called me this morning and stated that he has to start working on Sundays, even though he has requested to not work on Sundays. Lord, we pray that you would allow him to, or the doors to open, so that he would be able to come to your house and receive your means of grace. We also pray for Aaron, um, who comes to church every Sunday. He's not going to be with us for the next couple of months because he is visiting um, his father. We also pray for Shirley Wachtel, who has had a stroke, for Karen, who has fallen and broken her wrist, for Cindy's mother, who is on hospice, for Misty, Joan Barnes' daughter, as she mourns the death of her mother, yet as she continues to find strength and comfort in the resurrection. We also pray for those who suffer in body and mind in our midst. Preserve them in the truth that since Christ is at their right, since Christ is at their right hand, they cannot be shaken. Make their flesh dwell securely and give them peace in the promise that you will not abandon their souls to Sheol. Lord, in your mercy, Lord God of hosts, your Son is our chosen portion in our cup, forgiving and nurturing us with his body and blood. Grant that we may receive him humbly and in faith, that you may hold our lot secure in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hosts, you have caused the lines to fall in the pleasant places for us and given us a beautiful inheritance through your Son. Keep us faithful that we may enjoy its fullness with all the saints who now rest in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, oh, Holy Holy Lord God, 
Taught by our Lord and trusting in His promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Christ the Lamb of God, take his away the sin of the world. Welcome to the Lord's table. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. May this true body and blood strengthen you unto life everlasting. Heart in peace, knowing that your sins are forgiven. to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. In the cross of Christ I for thee. body, strengthen you unto life everlasting, to part in peace, knowing that your sins are forgiven. Hey. 
Savior and streaming. Welcome to the Lord's table. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Selah, remember your baptism and your baptism. You're forgiven of your sins and you receive the Holy Spirit. Christ shed for you. The blood of 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 Christ shed for you. Now may this true body and blood strengthen you unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, knowing that your sins are forgiven. Christ given for you. The body of 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 Christ given for you. Bennett, remember your baptism. In your baptism, your sins are forgiven and you receive the Holy Spirit. this true body and blood strengthen you unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, knowing that your sins are forgiven. From his head, in his hands, in his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. There is such love and sorrow meet for thorns come. Welcome to the Lord's table. Body of Christ given for you. Ollie, remember your baptism. Your baptism, your sins are forgiven, and you receive the Holy Spirit. Natasha, remember your baptism. In your baptism, your sins are forgiven, and you receive the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may this true body and blood strengthen you unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, knowing that your sins are forgiven. Table. The body of Christ given for you. 
Giovanna, remember your baptism. In your baptism, your sins are forgiven, and you receive the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Amanda, remember your baptism. In your baptism, your sins are forgiven, and you receive the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Now may this true body and blood strengthen you unto life everlasting. Depart in peace knowing that your sins are forgiven. Lord, may body and thy blood be for my soul the highest good. Because I have a sinful heart, yet thou thy lamb will... Welcome to the Lord's table. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. May this true body and blood strengthen you unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, knowing that your sins are forgiven. Before my soul, the highest good. Whatever inherit, it is faith, one and solid veins. It is the strength of heart and spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy not forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us to this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 We sing our closing hymn, LSB 370, What is the World to Me? It's a great hymn. I pray that you look at the lyrics at least if you're not going to sing it because it shows you what is the world to me. I have Jesus. blessed Sunday to each and every one of you. Next week, I will not be here. Pastor Bessel will be substituting for me. Please still come to church. And also, he will lead Bible study. So please come to Bible study. I know last time 
only Peter came to Bible study. So those of you who normally come to Bible study, uh, he's going to have an interesting Bible study. So please come uh, to Bible study. Also on October 8th, thank you, Ken. Uh, we are going to have a conference here. It's a one-day conference. And it's going to be, we don't have a name for the conference yet, but it's going to be specifically focusing on the hymn, What is This Bread? The gentleman who wrote the hymn used to be a vicar here many, many years ago. And he is going to come and do a presentation on the hymn, as well as uh, a book that he wrote, The Spiritual Society, I believe. I think he wrote that 30 years ago. And many of the things that he wrote in the book are taking place today. Many of the bad things um, that he wrote about in the book are happening today. So if you are interested in coming to that conference, there is a sign-up sheet in the back. It's titled, uh, What is This Bread Conference? Spiritual Society Sign-Up. So please sign up if you'd like to come to that. It's October 8th, and it will start at 10 a.m. Uh, in the morning. We also have magazines in the back. We have a magazine from uh, Lutherans for, or Lutheran Life, and this issue specifically focuses on using technology in your life. Many of us don't know how to use technology in a healthy way. It consumes us. Uh, it, it basically can become God to us in many ways. And so this magazine helps guide you to use technology in a healthy way, where technology is not in control of you, but you are in control of the inanimate object that you possess, such as an iPhone, um, iPad, whatever it might be. So take a look at that, read that if you can. Also, there is a magazine called Christian Culture. Uh, that magazine is specifically from the Lutheran Classical College, the college that will be starting, uh, I believe, in 2025. I think that they're starting in reaction to many of the Concordias closing, also many of the Concordias kind of going astray from our Lutheran identity. Uh, it will not be a federally funded college, so they will not have to depend on federal grants and money. It will be solely funded by fellow LCMS congregations. And so we're looking forward um, to having them start up. We give thanks to God that uh, Madison and uh, Bennett are with us again this morning. So if you didn't hear last week, Madison is a, a fellow LCMS member who has moved with her husband. Her husband uh, works for the airline industry and is not able to be here on Sundays, but we're thankful that Madison and her child, Bennett, are able to be here with us. And then I want to give thanks to God that Gary and Melody White are celebrating 17 years of marriage. And I mean, today is the, is the day of the actual anniversary, so it's great, but we also I want to give thanks to God that the bronze celebrated 50 years of marriage. And if I've ever missed your anniversary, I apologize, but we thanks we thank God that you're married. Yes. Oh, uh, one thing I want to uh, talk about my sermon really quickly. I mentioned something about Peter being in the boat alone, and then Peter. J James and John coming. I have to look at that in the text because it says they collect the, it was something that I said on the spot. So just uh, delete that from, from the sermon. I'm, I'm, I'm making that correction. So this is why it's, it's important to go by the text that you have written and studied. And then last, last but not least, Joan Barnes funeral is going to be taking place on, I believe it's the Thank you. Friday the 29th, 10 a.m. here. Uh, there will also be a viewing on the 28th, and that will be from 5 to 7 uh, at the Lima Mortuary right here on 3rd and Williams, or is it Reed? 2nd and Reed. Is it 3rd? Well, it's right there. 2nd or 3rd and Reed, right there. That's all I have. Please come and join us for Bible study. We're in Romans. The Lord be with you.